focus in, in, in being purposeful in making sure that the people who attend the church grow spiritually. Because often we, we want to do Hey Sam. What's up? Good. Is that home? I'm fine. Did you meet up with Josh finally? Yep. And? It was alright. He said I could join the team in a couple weeks. I just need to get interviewed by someone. Oh, that's great. Hey, Sam. What's up? Also, Mom left this for you. Is that all for me? No, one's not. Oh. You know what? What? He sent a link like an hour ago and I was just listening to it. Oh. I mean, when you were first starting, did he get you to do special Christian things? Special Christian things? Like what? You sound like necklace, bro. Haha, <laughs> ironic. No, I think he wants me to get baptized. He didn't exactly say it, but the entire video was about that. I feel like baptisms are a personal thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, me for example, my friends got baptized and I did the same thing because they did it. Does that make me a better Christian? Am I a better person because of that? Are you? Well, I don't know. I don't think so. I saw you having communion like three weeks ago. Why did you do that? Everybody was doing it, so? Exactly. Your point is? Well, like for me, I like to get my nails done because it's the girly thing to do, but it doesn't make me a better woman. It's just a nice thing, you know? So you think Jesus wants me to do all those things, or what? I think that he just wants you to be a nice guy. That's it. I see. Yeah, just relax. As long as you don't hurt anyone along the way, I think you're fine. All right, I'm gonna shower. It's, it's so excited because we are we are going um, we're teaching every week a series uh, to do with sacraments sacraments um, it's, it's a word that is not even in the Bible but it was taken later on by uh, religious organizations like the Catholic Church and others um, using some of the practices that they used to have in the early church the practices that eventually got lost or misunderstood of why the reason they were doing those practices. You have to remember one thing, and I want to just quickly explain a little bit of what happened, is when people were getting saved and they were joining the church, the Bible says in, in Acts 2 that the people were joining the church um, and immediately they were plugged into the family. Well, those new believers began to do practices. Like, what are some of the practices? Practices that Jesus himself taught his disciples to do and to practice like this. Baptism. We're having baptisms today. It was a public confession of a private decision that they have made to follow Jesus. Practices like communion. We had communion a couple of weeks ago. We talked about communion. Jesus said, every time that you get together, in my name you will do this, in memory of me. And we explain about communion. Some practices then, it turned into religious activities because the people lost the reason of why they were doing things. And as a church today in 2023, I guarantee you that there is a lot of the things that we do that we don't understand why. And therefore, we don't put the heart behind that, heart towards that. And sometimes we don't even value it enough to practice it. 
We lost that. Paul rebuked them. Remember when we were talking about communion, he rebuked the, the, the disciples, the church, later on and practices about communion and say, hey, listen, but if you, if, if you don't do it knowing of why you're doing communion, you are calling upon yourself condemnation. He's saying that's why analyze your heart. Understand why you are doing it. He, he came and rebuked them, but then just leave them there. He didn't leave them just there. He said, but do this because you need to go back to understanding the reason why. Today we're going to have baptisms, and there are people that have come to me, and they think, and we have also baptized people uh, where they think that uh, is baptism is just part of my duty without understanding that it's actually a public confession of, of, a, of a private decision that you made. But not only that, what baptism represents, and we looked at that a couple of weeks ago, that, that what it means is to just really die to your old self and come back as a new person. Right? Yeah. And it's like, it, it, it is an act. <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> it is a, it is an, it's an action that it represents, it symbolizes a spiritual truth. That is so impactful, and it was so impactful in the life of the early church. They didn't just come, and some people say, oh, it's just about Jesus. Exactly. Because it's all about Jesus. We do what Jesus taught his church to do. It's not like that plus Jesus. It's not like Jesus plus that. No. Salvation is only, only through believing in what Jesus did on the cross for us because of his grace. But those actions and activities, it really connect us. To that truth and the reality that we are free, that we are safe, that not only that, we had communion. And I'm just going to go, I'm just going over a little bit of what we have done so far. Communion or partaking the body of Christ is recognizing that he, he actually went to the cross and he, and he died for us. And his body was broken for us so we can Nowadays, in 2023, say that we can also be healed by his stripes. He did shed his blood as a sign that today we don't have to come with empty sacrifices, with dead sacrifices that cost a lot, but are meaningless. Like offering things, like buying, thinking that we can buy things. And Jesus says, no more. From now on, it is all because of my blood. Yeah. Amen? And those kind of things. And we understanding that today, uh, uh, I'm going to talk about confirmation. It's another powerful sacrament, if we want to call it that way, or activity of the early church. A confirmation. Eventually, it went to go into... Uh, 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 listen, I'm going to mention the Catholic Church because I grew up in the Catholic Church. It's not just I, because we, we are not here to put somebody down for us to be exalted. I'm here to exalt Jesus and to learn from the Bible. Are you with me, church? I don't put anybody else down and things like that. But the tradition came uh, that uh, the confirmation it was only done by the priest. I am the only one, the priest said, that can confirm you. And you will come and you will do this and you will do this uh, religious activities. And then I will confirm you and I will present you in front of the whole church. And now you are recognized in front of the church. But if we read the scriptures, we are going to learn who really is the one that can confirm you as a son and as a daughter. Are you with me, church? Today we're having baptisms. What a great, great scripture for that reason. Let's go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew 3. I'll drink some water here while you go into your Bible. You, you hear? I don't hear the sound of paper anymore. Oh, we are so modern, yeah? The modern church. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Um, <laughs> it's awesome. You guys good? All right. Didn't Maddie do a, such an amazing job last week? Man, she did. She used some words and it's like, 
no comprende. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you, have to, you, have to, you have to now settle for a lower level English, come on. But uh, well, let's read the scriptures because that's an awesome <laughs> level. Thing. Anyway, she did so good and it was, it was, it was good. She talked about the, the, the sacrament, if we want to call it there, of confession, how there is healing in confession. And uh, we want to encourage you, and I hope you guys have been practicing that confession. Confess, confess your sin to one another, uh, James said, that there will be healing in you. Confess, you know, ask for help. Somebody ask for help. If you're struggling with something, just ask for help. Amen? And, uh, and come to God and confess your sins to God. He will forgive you. He will deliver you. He will set you free. Amen? All right. Matthew, Matthew 3, Matthew 3, um, verse um, 13. Then, then it says here that Jesus went to Galilee, to the Jordan River, to be baptized by John. John tried to talk him out of it. <laughs> I think it's important that we should, it's like, are you sure? No, you should not get baptized to see if they really understand why they're going to get baptized. I think it's a good thing. Anyway, I encourage you today to get baptized if you haven't got baptized. It says, I am one of the ones who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? Jesus said, I should, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. Who requires it? The church doesn't require you. Some of you are getting baptized. How many people are getting baptized today? Yes, we have some people getting baptized today. It is a requirement from God. All right. It's not a church requirement. It's a, a requirement from God. And because God requires it, we also encourage the people to do it. Jesus himself, he says, it carry all out and God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, a Jesus came out of the water. It says, then the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God, after he came out of the water, I believe that today, when you come out of the water, then there is going to be a loud voice inside of you that is going to say, I'm proud of you. You need to understand that. You guys got to get baptized. But Jesus, Jesus said, the Bible says here, and so, so he saw, Jesus saw the, the, the heavens open. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. It wasn't a dove. It's like a dove. And settling on him. It came down. He saw this. And it settled on him, on his shoulder. And a voice from heaven said, this is my, this is, this is my son. This is my son. This is my daughter. And all of a sudden, there was a public confession and a public confirmation that he was the son of God. Everybody heard that. Everyone saw that. The confirmation doesn't come from a man. The confirmation doesn't come from a woman, doesn't come from a leader, doesn't come from a pastor, doesn't come from a priest, doesn't come from anybody. The confirmation, it comes directly from the Holy Spirit to you as you make the decision to follow him. And I'll tell you something. This is something amazing here that we're going to say, that we're going to see here. Then, then, then the, the Holy Spirit came. He says, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Verse, uh, chapter 4, listen to this here. Chapter 4, verse 1. Remember, when, when they wrote the Bible, they didn't go chapter 1, chapter 2. You know, we divided it to make it easier for us to read. It was all written at the same time. In chapter 4, 1, it says here, then Jesus was led. He got baptized, he came out of the water, he got confirmed, the, the world knew that, and it says, now you are confirmed, let's go, and took them to, took him to, led by the spirit, not by the devil, not by the flesh, by the spirit, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. You know how important confirmation is? And I know that Jesus would have not failed, it doesn't matter what happened. But it's a good example for us that maybe and only maybe the only way to really survive the desert is when you know who you are. Know who you are 
as much as whose you are. Are you with me, church? Jesus came out of there strong. How strong you are going to come out of the desert, it really is really determined by knowing that you belong to him. The desert will make you, will give you the strength that you need to come out of there. If you are going through temptation, if you are going through a struggle right now, if you're going through maybe physical struggles so, or, or financial struggles, so, or you have been betrayed or you have been, you know, rejected by friends, and that, those things hurt. Come on. This is real life I'm talking about. If you're struggling, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my mortgage? How am I going to pay my, my kids' tuitions? How am I going to do this? How am I going to pay this? I know people that are moving away from here, students, because they cannot afford this super expensive city. Beautiful city, but expensive city. Those are real issues because they want to stay here, but they cannot afford. Those are real issues. Those are the things that in life that matter most, but those things can disappoint you and break you. If you don't know whose you are. Confirmation of the Holy Spirit. I love this part. The confirming. The confirmation of the Holy Spirit. He knows. Do you know that you are God's? Do you know that you belong to him? Do you know that he has you? Do you know that he has your back? Do you know that he is the one who gives you the strength? You know that you can come to him with your problems, even with your mistakes, and he will forgive you and lift you up. Do you know that he is the one that loves you so much that he went for you to the cross to set you free? Do you know that? Has that been confirmed in your heart? If you don't know that, you need to know that. You need to come to him. You need to come to the Holy Spirit and ask him, Father, I want to know that I belong to you because when you come and bend your knees and you know that you know that you know that you belong to him you can go into face any giant and you will be strong even if you get hit even if you fall down you will stand up and you'll be strong because you know that if you belong to Jesus you know what destiny is and you know what the end result of your life it is going to be are you with me church Come on, church. Come on, church. The Bible says that we are more than conquerors. But do you know that? Right now, if you are struggling, does it feel like you are more than conquerors? It probably doesn't feel that you are more than conquerors. It probably doesn't feel that way. But I'll tell you something in the spirit. I know that I know that everything is going to be okay. Because I belong to him. Amen. Confirmation. You need that confirmation. Today, I love that part. That's that, you know, I heard somebody say mesh. When I heard that mesh, when, when our humanity meshes with the Holy Spirit, when our humanity meshes with the divinity of God, when we partake communion, when we get baptized, you're going down as a one person representing one person. And when you come out, you come representing that you are now, that there is in you now divinity. That they are not just human anymore, that there is power of heaven in you. That's what it is. That's why you need to know who you are. Because it is knowing that you are not just human, that there is divinity inside of you. I love that part because today your humanistic life, your <laughs> I lost the humanity, thank you. Your your flesh, your blood, your, your it's gonna mesh with the divinity of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what happened to me. I'm just gonna pause here. I I, I woke up this morning and I'm like I'm like uh, I'm like you know I had a bad sleep and. And it's like, um, and I come, to, I come to, to the washroom, I was talking to Leah, and it's like I grab my gel, and I'm starting, I put it in my toothbrush. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, wait, praise God I discovered that in time. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to talk this morning. Anyway, 
Bear with me. Mari, where are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go really fast. There is, you know, there is a, I love this scripture. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Yeah, some of the, some of the, some of the people are studying 2 Corinthians right now in the small groups. I encourage you to, to join the ones we're starting again in, in January. You guys good? Yeah. Okay, listen to this scripture. I'm going to. Probably it's going to be my last scripture because we have baptism today. But this, this, is, this is good. I love this. I was reading it this week. And even I went over last night. I said to Leah, I think this is one of my favorite scriptures. Second Corinthians 1, 21. This is how important it is to know. It is God, the Bible says here, it is God who what? See, that's why it's important you bring your Bible. It is God, 2 Corinthians 1, 1, 21. It says here, it is, okay, just believe me, this is going to be great. <laughs> it is God who enabled us. He enables us. Along with you. To stand firm for Christ. I really want you to find that scripture. I, I think that's important for you guys to read this with me. 2 Corinthians 1, 21 and 22. Thank you so much. It's getting there. It is God. Listen to this. Let's, go, let's read this scripture here together. It is God who enables us. He gives us the power. We are believers. We are new believers. We are coming to the family of Christ. Are you with me, church? Okay, we're now from our natural uh, lives into the spiritual life that we are entering in as a believer. He, we come into the family of God, and then God enables us. He, give us the ability, he gives us the ability to do the things. He is the one who enables us along with you. Not by ourselves, along with you. It's a, it's, a, it's a group. It's a family. We are not be, we are not meant to do life alone. We are not meant to be, you know, like I know peoples and ministries and don't congregate. Don't trust a ministry that does not congregate. You have to be a togetherness in the, in the Lord. He is the one who enables us. Go back, please. He is the one who enables us. Back to 21, please. He is the one who enables us along with you to what? To stand firm, to stand firm. You cannot stand firm without Him giving you the power to stand firm. You want to stand firm? You want to stand firm? Yes. You need that. He's the one to stand firm. He has commissioned us. Now, now He called us, enabled us, gave us the ability to be connected as a family, and He gave us the ability to stand firm, to remain firm, to be faithful. All right, everything is good. Yes, now he gives you a commission. You are not just called to come and warm up the, 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 the same seats of the church or, or theater or whatever. Every, there, is a, there is a purpose for your life. There is a commission. It says he commissioned us. Every single person here, from the youngest to the oldest, has a calling. You have a purpose. There is God a purpose that has for your life. It says, go, go 22. And it says here, and then, and he has identified us how important it is. He commissioned us. He called us. He has a plan for our lives. He has a commission. He has a, he has a perfect plan for our lives, a calling for our lives. And it says here, and then, and he has identified us, he says here, as his what? As his own. You know how important it is to be to know who you are? And it says here, he has identified us as his own. All right, how do I know that? You may ask. I'm glad you ask. You know that today, 
There are people that are running away from the Holy Spirit. It's too much. You know, today there are churches that they still teach that the Holy Spirit is not, it was, it was just for this time here in the, in the, in, in, in back in the Bible days. You know that today people are still thinking that talking about the Holy Spirit is too much. But look at what this scripture said. Please keep the scriptures there. It says, he has identified us as his own. How do I know I am his? By placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts. How do I know I belong to him? How do I know that he has called me to be his? The only way to know is the fact that he placed the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not know who you are. The Holy Spirit, and I love this scripture here. Because it says here, by placing the Holy Spirit in our, in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees, guarantees everything that he has promised us. You will not survive without knowing that God is faithful. To his promises. You will not survive. If without knowing. That he is faithful. To his promises. When he said that he will provide. When he said that he is the healer. When he said that he is the savior. When he says that he is the deliverer. When he says that he is with you. And will never forsake you. When he says that you, uh, he called you to be the head and not the tail. When, he, when you know that you know that thing is going to give you the strength that you need to keep on going when you are not seeing the results. It is so important for us to know that he is faithful to his promises. And as a guarantee, he gave you the Holy Spirit. As the first installment, when I bought my first house, I remember that. How would the bank know that I guarantee that I'm going to pay when I came with the deposit. Are you with me, church? When I came with the deposit and I say, here you go, a percentage to buy the house, the bank knows he is going to pay or he's going to lose this. It is a deposit. It is a guarantee. The Bible, there is a scripture that in, in another translation. It says it is a seal. Let's seal the deal. You mean that scripture, that, that, you know that expression? Let's seal the deal. Let's, let's stamp it. Let's shake hands. Give me a deposit. Give me your word. Sign a contract. Let's seal the deal. The Bible says here that there is that seal. The Holy Spirit called us and sealed the deal. How? By signing a contract. How do I know? Here is the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, people cannot survive. We cannot survive without the Holy Spirit. We will never know that you belong to Jesus without the Holy Spirit. Mere, mere, mere knowledge of the scriptures that not save you. Knowing, who you. knowing all of this doesn't mean a thing. But knowing it on, in here means everything. Understanding that I belong to Jesus means everything to me. How do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit came and he is the one who came and empowered me and is confirming and is assuring me that he is faithful to his promises. The Bible says here, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You know what? The Holy Spirit is the one who we need to be confirmed. There are so many scriptures. I'm not going to go through those many scriptures. There are so many scriptures that says that the Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. You need wisdom to, to make decisions in your life. 
This the Bible says, there is Bible says in many scriptures and the Holy Spirit gives us discernment. You know that how much we are lacking discernment nowadays? The church needs discernment. You need discernment in your life. You need to discern when somebody's lying to you. You need to discern when the decisions that you're making are taking you away from you. You need to discern if the group of friends who are you hanging out with is the right group of friends or no. You need to discern it. You need to discern if the person that you want to you wanna marry is the right person. You want to discern. You want to know that it's the right person. There are so many bad decisions that we make because we like discernment. Oh, she's cute. <laughs> he drives a nice car. It's not enough. You need to discern who you're marrying. Single people. You need to discern what career you're going to take. You need wisdom. You need wisdom to, to apply the knowledge that you have. Read, study. And now how, 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 can, how can I apply the knowledge? I need wisdom. Wisdom is knowing how to apply the knowledge. Are you with me, church? Who gives you that wisdom? The Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. We need, you need to know that you are the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that when they were praying, the disciples were praying, in the name of Jesus, they were praying, and the Holy Spirit came and whoom, just poured into them in the life in the sense, and they came out of there with boldness to preach the gospel. Boldness to one pray for the sake. Boldness to, oh, some of you are so timid. Some of us are so timid to talk to others. I'm going to say that because sometimes it's like, should I talk to the person? Should I not talk to the person? Ay, ay, ay. You know, and it's like, should I do it? Should I not? But when you begin to pray in the spirit, when you begin to say, God, give me that boldness, and you gave the disciples to, to, to talk you know what I'm saying? That's when the Holy Spirit will come and says, I want to go for it. I want to pray for that person. You need boldness. It's the Holy Spirit. You need, you need all of that. You need wisdom. You need knowledge. You need discernment. You need to know who you are. Because that is the only thing that is going to confirm. Actually, let's go Ephesians. Let's go one more. Ephesians 1. This, one more, one more, one more. What is the worship team here? We have baptisms, which is part of the teaching today. <laughs> we have baptisms here. I don't think that they have it there, or maybe they do. But first, for Ephesians 1. Ephesians 1. 13. And now you Gentiles, you're not Jews. Anybody that is Jewish here? We should be praying for Israel, really. <laughs> but if you're not Jewish, you're a Gentile, according to the scripture. <laughs> it's just a redeemed Gentile, loved Gentile, beautiful Gentile. But it's talking to us. And now you Gentiles, you have also heard the truth. The good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, when you make that decision to follow Him, He identified you as His own. How? How? By giving you, what does it say? the Holy Spirit there's no other way of knowing if you belong to Jesus without the confirmation of the Holy Spirit when Jesus came out of the water the Holy Spirit came so you're my son you're my daughter when you make a decision to follow Jesus the Holy Spirit comes this is you're my son. You're my daughter. And when you know, then you know, then you know, then you know who you are. There is no devil that can stand in front of you and distract you from following the truth. There is no devil, there is not nothing that can pull you away 
from continuing to be faithful in the walk that you started the day that you gave your life to Jesus. I love this part here. He's giving it to you, the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's warranty that he will give us an inheritance. And he promised and that he has purchased us. He has what? Purchased us to be his own people. And he did this. So we will praise him and glorify him. People of God, I love this sacrament, confirmation. Because I can still partake the sacrament. And I can know why he did it. And then they can go and get baptized. And I can understand and I can know why I'm doing it. But if I come out of there not knowing that now my life's my life is in the hands of Jesus, I can still go and live my own way. And how many people you know, or even our own lives, we have done things. And sooner or later, we go back to doing the very things that we say we will never do again. But when you know, then you know whose you are. When he confirmed in your heart by giving you the Holy Spirit, you say, God, thank you. I'm struggling right now. But I'm going to be okay. I'm going to survive. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go through. When you go to school and, you, and your friends make fun of you, you know, I go, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Nothing personal, nothing personal. I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. I won't take it personal. Because why? Because you know who you are. Prince William can come here. You can take everything away from him. He can be judged. He can be rejected. But he knows he's the son of a king. And whenever he goes, he knows who's, who he is. Right? Because why? Because he knows. Because he knows. Well, you're better than Prince Williams. You are the son and the daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But you need to know that. Will you please stand up? We're going to pray.